Hallelujah. Now, I said I was talking to you about quiet time. I know you want to hear it, right? Okay. I want to tell you what to do with quiet time. You must have a quiet time. I said, he told us, teach us to number our days. So, we must speak a period where we can stay quiet before the Lord. Now, every great man or woman in the Bible had such an experience with God. If you don't have that experience of being alone and quiet before the Lord, you will not accomplish much. Did you hear me? You will not accomplish much. Now, what I'm telling you is not just for ministers. It's something you're supposed to do in your life. If you want the creative life, you've got to have this. If you want an exceptional business life, if you want an exceptional academic life, anything, if you want to be exceptional, then you must have quiet time. Now, this quiet time, what do you do with it? I want to tell you. Now, many years ago, I would go to, um, I would go to a remote area. That's what I would do. Okay? But, uh, you're in a big city now, and there's no remote area. You know what I'm talking about. So you say, so what, what, what do I do? Well, it's not so much a physical thing as it is a mental thing. It is not so much where your physical body is as what you do with your mind. What do you do? All right. Since you cannot find a physical wilderness to go, okay, or climb a physical mountain, because all of that was for a purpose, not because God was in the wilderness or he was on the mountain. The idea was to be away from the busy activities around you. And you step away from all those busy activities. Jesus said, enter into thy closet. Okay? So you shut your door. Now, there are people who live with some other people, so they can't, they can't shut their door because there are other people who are inside the same room with them. I'll give, you, I'll give you an idea. I'll tell you what to do. Okay. So, find a place to be alone. And when you're alone, relax yourself completely. Now, when you're like this, can I, can I get a chair? Thank you. Now, when you're like this, you are not alone. You are busy. You are busy. All that will not help. So I suggest that you get rid of the chair. If you're going to use a chair, there's still a good idea what you'll do. Turn off the light. And then do like this. Did you see me? Yes, sir. Turn off the light. Then shut your eyes. And remain there. The first 30 minutes, you may not, you may still be trying to get yourself in. So continue until you get yourself in. 
Now, if you're smart, put a paper and a pen close by. Because God's going to talk to you. And when you put your writing material close by, that's faith. Now, here's how God deals with us. He deals with us in the arena of faith. If you do not keep a writing material close by, he will not be willing to tell you very important things. Why? Because he will tell you, you will lose them. You see that? Otherwise, you say, now you get something to write. So you make sure you have it by you. That means you're ready. Now that's the beginning. Are you hearing me? Yes. Now some people are too busy for this simple thing. And this thing, a few minutes with the Holy Spirit, can change your whole life forever. <laughs> he will turn you into a success, an unusual success. A few minutes. When he tells you something to do, How do I always know what to do? By listening. See? So I listen to the Spirit. And when He talks to you, now, some people say, well, I don't know, maybe if God talks to me, how am I going to know that, that um, uh, it's God and not my mind? Oh, that's very simple. That's very, very simple. You want to know the difference between God and your mind? It's very simple. Learn to meditate on the Word of God. Your mind will fade away. The thoughts from your own mind will fade away. Because of the overpowering uh, um, uh, manifestation or the overpowering strength of God's Word be clouding the thoughts of your mind. See, the Spirit of God will take over. Another thing you can do is to lie down so that all your body is relaxed. You say, what if I fall asleep? Go ahead and fall asleep. Then the master will come and say, sleep as thou, At least you write that down. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you want, see, maybe you have a, a little kiosk. You know what a kiosk is? A small kiosk. You want that kiosk to become a supermarket. And from a supermarket to be a super mall. It can happen. Yes. How can it happen? By doing this thing I just told you. In the morning, give him that time. And pray. When you pray, you pray, you listen, you relax yourself. Whatever he tells you, put it down. Then, go to work. Somewhere in the day or in the night, somewhere, whatever is okay for you. There are no fast, hard and fast rules. Pick Another time, I'm alone with the Spirit. Speaking in tongues is the first and best way to activate in your spirit. So when you speak in tongues, you activate your spirit. The Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. Then it says, I'll pray with the Spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding also. So when you, it says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit pray it. So when you pray in an unknown tongue, it's your spirit that's praying. So you know it's your spirit. Okay? That's what the Bible says. Now, when your spirit is therefore activated, your mind is without any understanding. It's unfruitful. So what? From there, you can now calm down. Haven't spoken in tongues and spoken in tongues and activated your spirit. Then you become calm. It won't be long before the spirit of God starts moving. You know, and you begin to experience those wonderful currents 
of electricity, divine electricity. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That's wisdom, brother. That's wisdom. I'm giving you phronesis. <laughs> See, when you do that, you will surely be ahead of those who don't. It's a matter of time. Now, let me tell you some of the benefits of that. Apart from the Spirit of God talking to you at all, there's what you call um, the location of the Spirit. What do I mean? The positioning of the Spirit. See, sometimes the Spirit of God doesn't have to give you an information. It doesn't have to say anything special. But here is what will happen. Your Spirit will become more easily attuned to the Spirit of God. In other words, you will be synchronized with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Your spirit will become synchronized with the Spirit's will through your quiet time like this. What happens is God starts positioning your spirit into the very position that He has in His calendar. Which means you will find yourself through God's uh, synchronization, in God's will, in God's purpose, in God's timing. You'll be located in God's position for your life. And that's what he wants first. Then you start running on his calendar. Oh. Ay, 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 ay. Are you here? Are you following what I'm sharing with you? I said, apart from him talking to you, this is something that happens. As you continue to pray with the Spirit, pray with the Spirit, that means praying in other tongues, okay? And then you become quiet and, and spend time just alone. You don't have to say anything, you just be there. And then once in a while you talk in other tongues and meditate on the Word, meditate on the Scriptures. And thank God, and meditate on the word. The Holy Spirit will be carrying out his ministry. Remember, he is the one called, he's called a paraclete. Okay, that means one called to walk with you, paripasu. Do you understand? He's going alongside with you. Okay, so what happens is, he is the, he is the greater one. So he takes you at his speed. Now, let's go. So, before long, you find you are taking steps at the same time with the Spirit. Then you find that you are in God's perfect will for your life. Oh, hallelujah. That's the best place to be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's the best place to be. Most people are living outside of the will of God. Most people are. That's the reason for their frustrations. That's the reason for their unhappiness. They think someone else is responsible for their lack of joy. They think someone else is responsible for the problems they are facing. No, nobody is responsible. When you walk in the will of God, you become, you, when you're in synchrony with the Spirit of God, you find that you are at peace also. The Bible says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is... Look at it. He says... Listen, he says, whose mind is stayed. What does that tell you? It's synchronized to be the same with the Spirit. His mind is stayed on him. He'll keep him in perfect shalom. The Hebrew, the Hebrew expression there says, that will keep him in shalom, shalom. He says, peace, peace. That's what the word says. He's letting you understand that expression. He says, peace, peace. What does that mean? He's dealing with peace of prosperity. That's why he uses it twice. He says, shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Are you still there? Oh, your life was... Listen, you were raised for the glory of God. God, there's nobody, nobody was ever like you. Nobody in this world today is like you. Nobody will ever be like you. So what? Shine for the master. Hallelujah.